welcome to another exciting episode of Crush Your Mountain Health. I want to tell you that it's so important to look after yourself. I, myself, I've done my best to, to do what I can to take care of myself, and I encourage everyone to do that, especially once you hit 50 years old and you're moving along. And I better take that word back. We have to, we can't say 50 years old anymore. And the reason why is because we are going to go ageless today. Today I have with me fitness expert and entrepreneur in the fitness field, Mr. Nathaniel Wilkins. Now let me just read you some information about him. Nathaniel's mission, and we just call it Nate for short, is to make wellness and healing a journey that's achievable and accessible for all. Life takes balance, and he makes this the cornerstone of his work. His works with the aging process has helped many individuals in their wellness journey to build a global, life-changing organization of diverse individuals centered on taking back and owning their lives at the core level of playing, having fun, learning, loving, connecting and living a better lifestyle through health and fitness has been his vision. To that end, he created Ageless Workout, a health and wellness fitness company that specializes in providing its clients with quality, cutting-edge programs and services. We're going to pick his brains in terms of what it means to be ageless in your workout, what simple steps can we take as individuals to aspire to build our muscle, why that's important, especially when we start hitting our 40s, 50s, and 60s and beyond. Mr. Nathaniel Wilkins, once again, I have to tell you, welcome to Crush Your Mountain Health. Oh my God, thank you so much. You know what? Uh, that introduction was probably uh, the second best introduction that I've received in my life. You know, the, the first one was the one that I had a chance to do it for myself, but you gave me the, the best that anybody else has ever given me. So thank you for the opportunity. You know, I, I guess the other thing is that I got to live up to what you just said. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to the exchange. Well, you know, you have a book out, okay, on Asians Workout. Let's start there. Would you tell us a little bit about your book? And then what inspired you to take the, take, take the step towards fitness and wellness and indeed to, to maintain the, the, 30s year, the 30 years young look that you have? <laughs> hey, listen, uh, that book was, uh, was a, a, a book that came out of uh, COVID, you know, while, while I was, um, you know, uh, trying to figure out what I was going to do with all of that, that time, I was still working out, and, um, you know, I came up with the ageless workout because I wanted to actually, uh, you, want, you know, be ageless. And so at the ageless workout, at first it was just going to be ageless, but ageless was gone when I looked uh, on GoDaddy, and then I came up with the ageless workout along with my partner. But let, let, me, let me tell you what, um, the, the, uh, the look uh, also had to do with uh, my, and, and I think you can relate to this, my wanting to turn back the clock. Like so many of us, we go through uh, sort of changes. I was working as a dance and recreation professional, uh, eating and uh, drinking like I wanted to. I used to laugh uh, uh, about myself because I, I used to say the clothes were changing when in fact it was me. I, I, I saw, saw a lot more of myself. And then one day I had a pain in my chest I had sense enough to know that I needed to go to the hospital. I went to the emergency room. They kept me in the emergency room for weeks at a time. They were running tests. I was in ICU. Um, and then friends came by looking sad. The, the word got out that I probably wouldn't make it. But then weeks later, uh, they let me out. I went to one cardiologist appointment. 
I didn't like the nitroglycerin. I didn't like the statins. And so I, I made a decision. You know, some of us stand on the platform and say, you know, say to the creator, you know, if you get me out of this one, I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to do. So I, I did the same thing. I started exercising. Uh, so exercising led, led to me taking classes. Classes led to me teaching. Teaching led to me managing fitness operations. Uh, and, and I will tell you that this was the, the highest calling that I had. And then that led me into the business of, of, of my own uh, ageless workout uh, with my partner. And we've been running in that direction ever since. And I can tell you that uh, living here in sunny South Florida uh, is, is a wonderful thing. It gets you into the sunshine. I'm not to tell you about vitamin D. But it also gets you around the, the water, uh, you know, and the drinking water, and your skin starts to look better. Hey, look, I'm, I'm just living a life. I don't know what else to tell you. Wow. Well, I'm going to tell you this. Okay, so many things resonated with me there because, you know, number one, just like you, I had my moment, you know, that wake-up call, as it were. It didn't resonate when the, when the doctor said that, you know, you're morbidly obese for your height, because I was mostly muscle. But what I didn't realize is that the food that I was taking and the lifestyle I was living at the time was taking its toll on me. And so very much like you, I didn't get that far as the ICU. And the doctor just diagnosed me as pre-diabetic, gave me, and wanted to put me on the insulin, and wanted to give me statins. I said no. And here's the thing about it, as men, it's so important that you not that you avoid the statins if you can, because statins are just it's just like carpet bombing. So we need the cholesterol, and they're finding out that what they call bad cholesterol, the LDL, is not as bad as they thought it was. But our bodies need that, you see. And when the, what, the, what the pharmaceutical industry does. They give you the statin, it causes you know, erectile dysfunction, so they sell you some pills to fix that. Which cause other problems, and they sell you some pills to fix that. But I decided that I didn't want to go that way. And so I really, you know, we're, we're kindred spirits in that sense. That's what started me on the path, because the one thing I would say is we're all in a state of becoming. The key is to be intentional about the outcome. And so I formed Chrysler's Coaching in order to help others to become their best version of themselves. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this other question too, okay? Why is it important, especially for persons of color, that they pay attention not just what they eat, but also how important it is for them to build and maintain their body the muscles in particular. Could you give some insights, further insights on that? Yeah, so um, well, let me just speak uh, very candidly uh, about myself. Um, so I am uh, in the race to reach 100 plus. And what I, what I know is that I can't wait uh, till tomorrow to prepare to be a hundred plus. I have to do that right now. Not, not to mention, there are so many challenges that we face almost on a daily basis. And that, you know, while there's a certain amount of stress that we put on ourselves when we go to uh, lift weights or what have you, but the body actually responds to a demand. And so that type of stress is what I call a good stress, but the stress of the everyday challenges, whether it be uh, climate uh, change or whether it be recession or rumors of wars and all of the other things that are associated, you know, it, it takes a toll on our mental, our physical, and our spiritual bodies. And before we know it, we are depressed. We, you know, many of us have gone through what I call PTSD uh, in in terms of our, our, our life experiences, whether we've been in the military or whether we grew up 
in uh, bad situations uh, with family or friends or what have you. And so those things take a toll on us in order for us to really be at, at, the, at the best, at our tip top. We need to take care of the temple. And the temple is the body that we have that the creator actually gave us. The only vehicle that we have to make it through life. And if we don't take care of that, then we find ourselves in dire straits and situations premature death, if you will, or going through dementia or all of those other you know, sort of illness or ills that we, that we go through. And for one thing, you know, usually people like us, when everybody else gets a cold, we get pneumonia. And so we have to be overly uh, protective of ourselves and particularly protective of our bodies so that we can take care of our families, we can be available for our children and our children's children. I, I hope you like that. Absolutely. That's, I love that. It's, it, it's, the fact of the matter is that when we take the time to do these works, we are actually counteracting so many things. Now, you mentioned PTSD, and recent studies have come out to show that trauma is as genetically passed on as other uh, physical characteristics or personality characteristics. In other words, people who experience some sort of trauma can literally pass that sense and the emotion, that experience on to their children. Now think about what that means for an entire group of people who have endured slavery, segregation, maltreatment, and not just the African American community. You see this thing replicated in the indigenous population where diabetes is very high where alcoholism is very high, where depression is very high. You see, if you turn around and you as an individual, we as individuals, take charge of our lives, as you mentioned, we are now counteracting all of those generations of trauma that's been inflicted upon us that we've brought with, number one. Number two, we are also preventing ourselves from going down that road of entropy, as it were, where our bodies just begin to break down. You know, one of the things that happens around, that starts to happen from the age of 40 onwards is an illness called sarcopenia. You don't notice it as much, but as you get older, in 60s, 70s, you know, then that muscle is clearly breaking down. The only way to keep that from happening is to do the exercise that build that up. You know, have you ever run into that? On your website, you know, I noticed you, you're working with a lot of their clients, and many of them are elderly individuals. And I'm sure that they've had hip replacements in some cases. Uh, the worst thing in the world for me is to see a woman who not only has sarcopenia, but has also taken a step one day and her hip bone snaps. Mm -hmm. How do we encourage the individuals? It, let's just say we want to encourage individuals to protect themselves now. What's something simple that our clients can do, uh, and just our viewers at large, what simple steps can they do to just start to build their muscle? And we're not talking about going to the gym and, 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 and turning into Arnold Schwarzenegger. We, we just want them to get a, to just, to just start, like I say. Yeah, so, so you, you know, this is interesting that, that you bring this up. We talk about sarcopenia, um, but, but but let's let's examine it a, a, a little a little bit closer and, and go deeper into that conversation, if you don't mind. You see, what, what we're talking about is that um, we lose muscle mass right every decade, three to eight percent. And it's, it's, in, it's important that we build um, uh, and maintain muscle. So how do you do that? 
One is, and you're saying simple stuff, right? So the, the activities of daily living, standing up as an example, if you're sitting down uh, all the time, then you are allowing the muscles to be weak, right? Uh, and the bones to get brittle. So standing up, and that's about balance. You talked about a balance earlier, that, that I'm about balance, but we all should be about balancing, right? So we, we have uh, become uh, sort of convenient in our lives, right? So we have uh, the remote control. We don't have to get up to change television. We can order our food from somewhere and somebody can bring it to us. Amazon will come and bring stuff to your door. You can tell the children or somebody else to go get it for you. So, you know, we need to be about the business of building up, 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 up our muscles. And so the, uh, one of the other ways you can do that is to move your arms, uh, move your shoulders, um, you know, it, 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 it is what I'm, what I'm saying is, is the easiest thing for us to do, uh, but we won't do it because it's so convenient. Uh, so, so um, maybe you don't have to go and pick up um, weights. Maybe you can pick up a can or something. Uh, and uh, one of the other things that I think we could do is work on our grip that you know, when we, when we find out that we have a, a poor grip, you know, that's related to strength. So I think that we need to look at these simple things that we have in our life uh, to um, sort of get to the place of building, building muscle. I hope that answers some of the questions that you talked about. Yes, absolutely. And you see, the fact is that when we take the time for that, we are able to, we're not just building muscle, because when we lose that muscle, we're also losing our bone density. So the counteract to that is to build the muscle and then our bodies respond because they have the support. The skeleton is there to support the muscle. So it automatically starts to build. Now add to that the proper intake of food. I don't like to use that word diet. People that watch my show, they know that I prefer to say eating a lifestyle because the word diet has the, has the word die in it. So I try to avoid dying as much as I can. So if we're able to, to maintain our eating lifestyle so that we're eating the whole foods, uh, so that we're taking them, you mentioned sunlight earlier. That's such an important, important thing. I'll add something else to that. There's a thing called grounding. It's pretty simple. Get outside and stand with your bare feet on the ground as you're walking, as you're exercising. Get yourself connected to the earth. You notice, if you believe in the Bible as I do, uh, you notice that God, when, he, when, when Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden, he made long garments for them. He did not make shoes. <laughs> okay? Just, just saying. But we have that power in us. We, our bodies operate on, with, on electricity. And it's important for us to be grounded as well so that we complete that circuit. So we have the vitamin D that comes in from the sunlight that our body desperately needs and produces. We have our grounding from the earth. We have our process of eating. And look, can, we, can a person pick up different things in the household to build muscles? Nate mentioned uh, picking up a can, you can do that. How many of us have bottles of bleach in the house? How many of us have have large jugs of juice? Stay away from store bought juice, by the way. But what you can do is to use those things to work out with, you know. And you can build and you can build muscle, believe it or not, with just those simple things. I might put up a little bit of a a, 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 a uh, household tips to use for that. But let me ask you this, sir. Uh, you know, what is your morning routine like? Well, let me, let me take a step back because uh, mm -hmm. step back. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to expand a little bit more on on this conversation that we have about you know muscle and balance and what have you. That everybody is is different, right? Mm -hmm. That. Um, you know, my, you, you asked me about my morning routine, I'm going to tell you about that. But what, what I'm saying is that the prescription or the, the exercise or the movement program that, that I have 
uh, most people will probably say that's too much. But you have to build up to that. And the body will respond to a demand if you are putting the body in a situation where it has to respond. But the simple kinds of things, like uh, like you, you pointed out, uh, picking up uh, maybe a, a, the soap or, or a box of soap or something like that, but, it, but just getting outside and going back to some of the things that we that we did before, like uh, you know gardening or, or or taking care of flowers or watering the plants. These are the kinds of things that can can help us uh, do that. But let, let me just tell you that my morning routine starts at about four a.m. and on uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I am uh, doing a boxing fitness. Because I love that huffing and puffing, uh, you know, I love to be able to uh, learn some things, um, and so uh, that's an hour long of me putting my body in that situation where I'm saying I talked about that stress, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I talked about my lungs, uh, you know, getting the fresh air in and, and getting the old old stuff out of my body, but also getting out the frustrations that maybe I've had from uh, you know a situation that I had with my family not taking it out on my on my spouse or somebody else I can go get that bag and uh, and and just turn that into something good so that's a part of the morning routine and then I then on Tuesdays and Thursdays I'm learning some functional training right because I need to move from side to side I need to challenge my body and my mind in different ways and then sometimes I do stretching or yoga so I you know I'm trying to have a full uh, program that allows me to function the way that I want to function but this is this is what I'm talking about for me and I would actually for some people I would actually suggest that all they need to do because they haven't been doing much is do some stretching or maybe going out for a walk and then building a program from there. So I don't, I don't want to intimidate anybody. What I want to do is encourage. I want to be, you know, uh, I want I want people to know that they can get to the place that they want to be. That that it's really not about a destination; it's a journey. You know, motivational speaker Robin Sharma has a book out called The Five A.M. Club. Well, Nate and I we're in the Four A.M. Club. That's right. At four, okay, he does his workout because of my time constraints. I have my workout, and here's the thing: you notice he said, and uh, my people, okay, I guess I better call you crushers, okay. You hear what he said? You start out small. So on my journey, I started to do push-ups, and I was able to get up to about twenty-five. All right, but what happens is. It's a mind thing as well. So you're not just training your body, you're training your mind. And when I work with my clients, I help them to kind of work on their mind too, in terms of what they can do. So I started out with that 25, but daily now, and for the past couple of years, I do 100 push-ups a day only because I don't have time to do two. <laughs> you know, and that's not a brag. You work yourself up to that. You see what I'm saying? But I have that, and I have dumbbells that I use, and I and, and it's a basic a full body workout that involves stretching as well, and a bit of uh, you're taking some time to do um, quick, med quick meditation as well, because again, all of that comes into your private victory, for, for first victory of the day. So you know we're on the same page on on so many different things. Tell me something. When it comes to your um, your challenges and the dealing with the business and looking after your clients, how do you, what type of uh, programs do you take them to? I know you meet them where they are, but what type of uh, what what type of programs do you take each one through? Let's just say someone who's relatively healthy. We're not talking about somebody. Yeah. Who's you know, who's, who's, who's trying to crawl out of the grave, someone who's relatively healthy. Well, again, it depends on their own personal goals, right? That um, that you, you, you actually have a conversation, just like you would go to, a, to your own um, personal doctor, and they, and they examine you, and they talk to you about 
uh, your own body, right? The data that, that they found through the examination or the exchange and the conversation. And then you structure a program of a movement or exercise, a prescription specifically for that person. I have a client right now, I'll give you an, an example. His, I'll call him Michael. And Michael wants to build up his, his chest. He wants to have his his uh, pectoral muscles, you know, you know, like most men. He wants to have those big pectoral muscles. He wants to have big arms, right? So uh, two or three times a week, I'm working specifically on his pecs. And then we know for a fact that uh, if you work the pecs, then you also need to work the, the back. The back of the, the arms, the chest. Yes. So I develop a program around his chest and his uh, triceps two to three times a week. And then I develop another program that uh, it works on his back and his biceps. And then uh, I'm also working on his abs, right? Or his abdomen or um, working on his cardiovascular. So in, in our program, what we attempt to do is give a full program. You just cannot, uh, and, and let, let me say this, I, I, I don't disagree with anybody, but I'm saying that you can't tell the body where to change. You have to train the, the total body. And then the other thing I would say to you is that nutrition plays an important role along with recovery and rest. That you, if, if, you're, if your mind and, and your stomach, your body and your brain are not connected, if your microbiome is off, if you are not getting the proper amount of rest and hydration, all of those things tied in together, you're not going to meet the goals that you have for yourself. And then you'll be looking at me and saying, well, I'm not getting where I need to be. And I would say to you that have you done all of these things? Are you getting six to eight hours of sleep? Are you drinking the proper amount of water? Are you, are you, are you, are you? So that's how I would structure a program for an individual based on what I know about them and what they've shared with me. You know what, um, a while back when we were talking and we were mentioning how individuals don't quite see the things that we see, and you said something very profound, you said the song is not for them. Well, I'll tell you, sir, you're singing my song, okay? okay. Uh, you're singing my song, and the reason why, um, you might, you, uh, friends, you might have noticed he mentioned something called the microbiome system, okay? That is something that people have ignored for so long and here's the thing about it. Your body's made up of six trillion cells. Six trillion! That's a lot. Your microbiome, meaning bacteria in your mouth, the bacteria in your gut, the bacteria on top of your skin, some of them they've even discovered within, around the brain that regulates certain parts of the brain, makes up up to seven quadrillion, that's a thousand trillion, pieces of material on your body, living things that keep your body regulated. So how is how important it is that you make sure you have the right stuff? Now that begs the question, well, what is what happens when we take antibiotics? When we're always using antibacterial soap and all that stuff all the time. Okay? Well, the food industry knows because now suddenly they're selling you prebiotics postbiotics, you see, the stuff that should have been in the body in the first place. You know, the newborn babies, they find the newborn babies that are born in the farm or at least allowed to play outside, they don't get as sick as children who are kept and sequestered away because their bodies are picking up all the good microbiota out there that keep them, that can regulate their body and keep them healthy. Getting back to maintaining ourselves in terms of of exercise and all, all in terms of mindset, heart set, and soul set, okay, and life set, as the Robin Sharma mentioned, you know, he also mentioned something else in terms of who we're around. How does our association affect this, our state of health? 
Or, you know, I go back to what my grandmother said to me where, you know, I, I can remember her saying to me that, you know, don't don't hang around that boy right there. You know, he, he's nothing but trouble. He, he, he's going to get you in trouble. And I used to say that, you know, she didn't know what she was talking about. But uh, as time went on, you know, Johnny went to jail. Mm -hmm. People were stealing. And I didn't know how she knew that. But uh, had I been hanging around Johnny, I probably would have been in the same situation with Johnny. Let me, let me just take you another step further. When, when I had my health challenges, it was because I was drinking beer, eating late with my friends, going to meetings, hanging out late, right? Because that's what they were doing. And, and I guess the, the old adage is that association brings about a simulation. Or better still, my grandmother said, "If you sleep with dogs, you get fleas." Uh huh. You it must be. We might. We might be related. That's what my grandmother said. <laughs> so, so I guess what I'm saying in in a, in a nutshell is that you have to be careful of who you you hang around, um, it, because um, the 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 people you hang around uh, will will rub off on you. So. If you want to be a millionaire, you need to hang around millionaires because they can show you what millionaires know how know know and how to get a million, right? So it's not that. Let me let me just say that it's not that the people are so bad necessarily. They may not be right for you in in, in terms of where you're trying to go. Now, I'm, I, you know, I'm not judging anybody. I'm saying in terms of where you're trying to go, where I'm trying to go. Again, is to reach over a hundred. Yeah. So the people that I need to associate with are people like you, you and me. We need to we need to talk a little bit more. I need to learn some stuff from you. Exactly. I'll tell you something. Okay. The saying is that you are the sum total of the five people you choose to be with. So when it comes to the energy, we're not talking about bad people. We're not talking about horrible people. But just in terms of now, we're this is North Carolina. The city of Oaks, Raleigh is where we are. And if you look, you will see two to three fast food restaurants on the block. In fact, you'll have a, virtually an entire block full of some sort of fast food. Now, if we are associating with individuals who are constantly eating uh, the Bojack, the Big Macs, the, the, the stuff like that, those um, highly palliative, fat-laden, salt-laden foods, what's going to happen? We're going to be tempted to eat the same thing. And they don't mind, but it doesn't make our bodies feel good. It's not feeding ourselves fully. It's not feeding, feeding ourselves in terms of our nourishment on a very personal spiritual level you might say it's not feeding ourselves in terms of our mental capacity it's not feeding ourselves certainly not feeding our muscles the way it should be and that microbiome you're feeding all the bad stuff so mm -hmm. why are we feeding bad you see mm -hmm. those things are so vital vital and so yeah we do gotta hang out together because we got because because we, we we're always eye to eye on things and we can learn from one another the Proverbs says, iron sharpens iron. And that's what we like to do when we work together. Uh, there's a friend of mine down in your area. His name is Dwayne. And um, he's got a little company with, uh, with, with dealing with, it's a, it's a game board. It's a board game, but it deals with health and, he and, and health intelligence, wellness intelligence. These are things that not only do we need to learn if we're going to if we're going to make a game of it, mm -hmm. but we also need to share that with our young ones, because they're going to do what they see us do. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my son was telling me about his kids, and he was trying to tell them to you know, to go a certain way, and they said, "But Daddy, that's what you did." Mm -hmm. He couldn't. As he had nothing to say because there was he was they were right in that sense, but what he should have said is, "Do you want to live? Do, I want you to live. Better than what I am living, and I'm trying to make a change now. Don't wait to make a change now. The same thing with us in terms of our health. Don't wait until the doctor tells you that it's too late, and then we're huffing and puffing trying to get back to where we should have been. Take the steps now, no matter what stage you're in." 
take those steps now so that you can be in the best state of being for yourself, for your family, for your life. Nate, you're, you're an amazing gentleman in so many ways. You're just talking to you is incredibly inspiring. And, and, and I just feel 10 years younger just by having spent this time with you. You know, I've got one more question for you. And, uh, that's, and it's a question I ask all my audience before we wrap up. So Nathaniel Williams, what does it mean to you to crush your mountain? Hey, look, you know, that's a, that's a, a, a fantastic question. Um, and, and I, you know, I suppose that I ponder that almost on a daily basis. Uh, you, when I, when I wake up in the morning and I'm out for my walk, um, smelling the fresh air and seeing what the creator has to say. Uh, so, so for me to, to crush my mountain is that, I, you know, that I'm, that I'm, I'm, I'm a blessing to some people uh, every day that when I get an opportunity that I give the best that I can to the people that I get a chance to spend time with, that I'm, that I'm really a blessing for my, my children and that I'm actually uh, giving back to the community that uh, that that I'm a, a part of. Not only the community that I'm part of, because I have a tribe of people around uh, the globe that I'm that I'm actually giving back to them. That they that that I that they get as much as they give to me. I think that's what uh, crush my mountain means to me. Absolutely, and I think that's an amazing thing because. When we're there to give to others, when we're there to help others to achieve, it elevates us. You know, that's you know, it, it's a continuum, and that's basically the whole concept of being a people on the planet. You know, you know, years ago, hundreds of years ago, there was no such term as race. There was just people. There was no such term as supremacy. There were just people. Mm -hmm. Yes, bad things happened to people all over the globe at that time, during those times. But there was just things that happened. War was war, you know, and you did things in war. But now things have changed so terribly. We're towards the end of, 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 a, of, a, of a system of things. But that doesn't mean that we let ourselves deteriorate. What that means is, just like Nathaniel, we work to get to that century mark. Or even like Dave Asprey, he wants to go 20 years short of 200. He wants to live to be 180. Okay, I don't know about the whole upgrade your lifestyle sort of thing. I'm not going to put microchips in my system and all this stuff to latch on. No, what I am going to do, though, is do the things to build my body up, maintain my mind, and have the good connections of people that can elevate me. And that can extend your life as well. So friends, thank you again for joining us. Uh, if you like this information, give me a thumbs up, put, you know, leave a comment, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, Nathan, where can we find you in case of my clients? My clients, my people, they. Yeah, they know they can get me at Chrysler's Coaching. They can get me here on my Facebook page. Where can we get you? And hey, listen, let me just say that people like you and me do stuff like this, and I've enjoyed the exchange. You know, I hope I've, I've given as much as you've given to me. You can get a hold of me like we did through LinkedIn or Facebook. You know, LinkedIn, Nathaniel Wilkins, uh, Facebook, The Ageless Workout. Um, Instagram, it's The uh, Ageless Workout. And then, um, you know, we have a website, uh, agelessworkout.com. Um, and then, you know, if you just want to try us, uh, put your foot in the water, we give one free session to let you know what, what we're doing if you sign up. And then, of course, we have a newsletter that we send out on a monthly basis. That's how you get a hold of me. Beautiful. You know, you mentioned the, the, the free session. Uh, friends, right now, I, that, just so that you know, from now until September 15th, we have a limited coaching, free coaching package. It's a free coaching package where you get five sessions, absolutely free, to help you to get to your next level. So, like I said, friends, thank you so very much. Nathan, it's amazing 
to have you with us today. It's just, it's just a pleasure to talk with you. Uh, you know, it'll be like past midnight if we kept on talking. <laughs> you know, but yeah. again, thank you for this time. We look forward to to have you back in further collaborations uh, coming up. And like I said, friends, uh, I always tell everybody, you have to be the one to take charge of your life, to charge of your health. And if you have your life and you have your health, you have your wealth because you can do anything. So as I always say every week at this time, don't just climb your mountain, crush through it, and we will see you next time. Thank you so very much, Nathan. Thank you. Take care.